Can I open the September 6, 2023 select board meeting? Um, call it to order. Do we have any adjustments to the agenda? Hearing none. So we do not have a quorum. Uh, we have four members of the select board right now. Um, one select board member just came home from the hospital this afternoon. And I don't know where our other select board member is. I apologize. Um, we've all come prepared. Unless he comes in shortly, we, we can um, hold business for informational purposes only, but we can't take any vote, finding vote at this time. So I'm going to table the approval of the minutes of August 16th. <laughs> we had um, comments from the community, um, from someone from the US Small Business Administration, but I do not see her either. And we have with us uh, Paul McGrath from um, Gulf Road. Do you want to wait and speak to the full board when we um, have come, when, can, when we can uh, make any kind of decision or um, want to comment anyway? I guess the part of problem is to find out when the board setting was done. Um, you know, we came back with some things. Also, some of the signs I believe that were put up have been taken back down. And so I just kind of want to figure out where things are at based on, you know, this is kind of a year in the making of, you know, between the whole first posting and then, you know, the dynamic, long story short, the dynamic of Gulf Road changes. So when between the bridge posting and then talking about lowering the speed limit, et cetera, that are all got pushed back waiting for the road site, which was done in June. Uh, and so I hadn't heard anything back, so that's why we scout a couple times, and then that's when Kurt um, said, you ought to talk select board again, and then we So um, I guess I don't know what information I have the road study, but kind of where we're at based on that. So. We did a traffic count study. Yep. Three places on Gulf Road. Yep. From June 5th to June 12th. Um, and that was going to just kind of let us know um, how the traffic was uh, traveling on that road. And that that is how, that's the basis for set, setting the speed limit. But I'm going to ask Kurt to um, speak somewhat on this because you kind of were handling this more than I was. So I don't know about this, the signs and so forth. Yeah, sure. Um, it's really difficult for me to hear Paul. Is there any chance we can get a microphone closer to him? Well, he can come over here by this um, empty seat, this microphone. Um, so I, I, I can give you some, some background. Um, this has been a concern for well over a year, if not more, um, at this point. Um, we did uh, request a, a road for um, a traffic study. Um, and you know, there also was uh, a request to try to slow down the traffic as they're coming up to the bridge on Gulf Road. Um, now, this happened at a time, unfortunately, when the state decided to uh, shut down their sign making shop. And <clears throat> so with some sense of urgency, I went out to the commercial market and got signs um, that we did put up and post. Um, and it was brought to our attention once we put those up um, by uh, by others 
that the signs were not um, compliant. Uh, in other words, they were not compliant to the, um, uh, the federal regu regulations um, for road signs. Um, and this was because we wanted to get something up quickly. Um, and uh, just as quick, we needed to take them down because the complaint was correct. The complaint was correct. These are not official signs. Um, and so they did come down. Um, we, we, we did do the road study, um, the traffic study rather. And the result of that did indicate that the um, 85 percentile speed limit or, or traffic uh, flow was on average at 42, 43 miles an hour or something like that. Um, much slower on the Route 15 side, <clears throat> but on the uh, uh, North Wilcott Road side, um, both points were showing over 40 uh, miles per hour, um, at, which were in the 85 percent peptile. Now, according to the uh, state regulations uh, in changing speed limits, um, they first require that this kind of a study take place. And then they set a benchmark at the 85 percentile. And uh, this is based on national standards. Um, so the request is, as I understand it, to reduce the speed to 25 miles an hour. Um, and I did spend time with Paul. Um, I have visited over there a few times. And uh, Paul is absolutely correct. And people are flying down that road. They are definitely speeding. Um, but the question comes up as to what does the town have authority to do? To change it to a 25 mile an hour um, uh, limit, um, we would, it would be a random decision. Um, and we have been cautioned by law enforcement that those kinds of changes um, are very, very difficult to enforce. Um, there's a classic case of this in Hyde Park where the residents put on a lot of pressure on the town to change it to 25, and it, um, it it's simply just not enforced there as a result. So I think that the issue here we have is that Paul is correct. I mean, it, people fly down that road as they do in the Pond Road and, and other roads in town. But I don't know that the solution can be a 25 mile an hour speed limit. Um, I think, the, so the issue at hand is speeding, not, not really the, the, uh, the signage as so much as it is for speeding. Um, there's some schools that would say that putting up a 25 mile an hour sign will do nothing. Um, others say it's worth a try. Um, but I believe under the state regulations, um, it, pro it, is, it is not, in my opinion, an option for the town. So that kind of puts us to what do we do about speeding, whether it's on Gulf Road or elsewhere. And um, my su personal suggestion is, is that we use cautionary signs um, and not make the mistake of buying them commercially this time um, and getting uh, uh, signs that uh, do fall under the federal regulation. And um, we can put as many of those up as we want to. Um, and that would be my personal recommendation. What do you mean by caution signs? Uh, yellow, sign. yellow, yellow sign. Yellow. Like the sign. recommended twenty-five mile an hour that are on the. I guess it's the south side of the road, on the curves. Uh huh. Is that what you're talking about? That's an advisory sign. A cautionary is the big diamond. Um, there's actually only a few different ways in the MUTCD that you can uh, enhance a cautionary on a bridge like the one that you have. Uh, some of those being putting signage further out. You don't really have the option on the North Wilker roadside to do that because you need so much runway Is it, for those to be effective. I'm sorry, what's your name? Mike Perry. Okay. I'm just a guest here. I don't know anything. I oh, okay. I, just, I didn't know who you I used to work in road construction and I kind of assigned 
Gotcha. Uh, then coming from the goal from the 15 side, you could do a few additional signs or add some that have higher uh, reflectivity or lighted or things like that. But there's there's actually pretty narrow guidelines on how you can increase cautionary signs for roadway hazards. Right. The, the bottom line is, you know, a year ago, we, you know, we met about the bridge and about the posting and about the weight limits and, and all that good stuff. And so not that there weren't trucks running illegally over it before the posting was rescinded, but now based on their road study, if you look at the average of the three different spots, it all comes down to pretty much the same. There's over 300 cars a day that go down that road. I mean, there's six of us that live on that road, six or eight houses on that road, 68 of which are trucks. And this is just based off of the, the road study that, you yeah. know, this morning, yeah. And so trucks aren't necessarily, I mean, some of them do fly, but the trucks aren't necessarily the speeding culprits. It's commuters, bottom line. It's it's people on there's UTVs, there are I mean, anything you can name flies up and down that road. Every road sign that is on that road, or let's say 99% of them are riddled with bullet holes. And whether that was done 10 minutes ago or 10 years ago, the road is just, it's one of those roads where it's a cutoff. The town has now changed the dynamic by, and I had found some things back in, and I guess part of it is this has been visited and I found it in, in old select board minutes. This has been visited several times. And some of the people that, you know, are on this board were involved with it back then. And so, or in this room generally in these meetings, we're on the board back then. And so what's happened is the whole dynamic of that road has changed. You're not talking about, you know, every other, you know, every second select board minutes that you look at is talking about trying to limit tractor trailers on North Walker Road because of the infrastructure damage that they're doing to the road. And us as taxpayers or us as a town don't have the money to do that, to fix it. And that whole conversation, that's a whole nother conversation. But in doing that, in having that conversation on North Walker Road, which is a full two-lane center striped road, we're trying to limit it on that, yet we just expanded the scope of what is allowed on Gulf Road as a crossroad. And that road on every single corner is at best a lane and a half. And so now we have not full-blown track to trailers all the time, but you've got 70, 80,000 pound dump trucks with trailers running back and forth. When gravel runs their trucks, they run them two or three at a time and they run back and forth. And so what that does is it adds to the dynamic. You're never going to stop all the speeders. But when 85% of the people are doing 43 miles an hour right off of the bridge, literally 150, 200 feet off that bridge, which I just drove over it. Just to, I'd never looked at my speed, my speedometer going over the bridge. At 19, 20 miles an hour, you're like, okay, this is a comfortable speed if you can see, right? So in 150 feet, they're accelerating to 45 miles an hour. There are, by the math, there are 45 cars a day that are doing 45 to 60 miles an hour down that road. Someone's going to get killed. And part of that is because now with the amount of trucks on the road, because of what we've changed, that has totally changed the dynamic. I walk or bike down that road every day. And there are people in, with walkers that walk down the road people walking their dogs. There was a bike race that ran through there this weekend. Every day I walk down there, three or four people got to lock up their brakes, swerve out of the way because they come around the corner at 40 miles an hour down by the dump. It's just dangerous. And so I don't know what the answer is. I think there is, I disagree a little bit because I looked at the Vermont back roads when you originally sent it to me, Kurt, I looked at that Vermont back roads and, and honestly, the town wasn't going to do the road study until I, basically said, one, I'm going to pay for it if LCPC doesn't, because it says right in here they will. And I've talked to them. And so I think there is a road study has to be done, which a traffic study has been started. 
But if you look at, you know, people talk about sight lines. I went, I took pictures this morning because when I walked out, it's actually the first time I realized that the signs were gone on the bridge. There is no yield sign. There's no anything sign. It just says one lane bridge. But one of them, which you can see, you can't even see it. It's behind a bush. That's coming from North Wilkett Road to the bridge. You can't even see the one lane bridge sign. Right. It's a question of trimming back a bush. That is a problem. But, in the but with, with, you know, the different seasons it brings on in the winter, because no leaves, you can see straight through from almost North Wilker Road to Mel Stoddard's Hay Barn, right? Right now, you can't even see the other end. There's a car. This is coming from the same side. There's a car in that picture. You can't even see him on the other side of the bridge. I know it's black and white, but that car isn't even at my driveway yet. And so you can't see either end of the bridge or approaching cars coming either way. And the minute I've sat there and, you know, I work from home, I work on our land a lot. So I'm around a lot, obviously. And so literally I've seen gravels trucks go through there when they are running. And when the puddle is sitting in front of, on the North Wilkett side of the bridge, it's a big puddle that forms right there. Literally they're coming through fast enough. Water is coming over the front of their truck. That's no exaggeration. And so you got a truck coming through there and they're hitting fourth or fifth gear by the time they hit that straightaway. That's 40 miles an hour all day long in an 80,000 pound rig. You get some goofball kid coming around the corner from the other end doing the same. Someone's going to get killed. You can't police for everything, but the sheriffs don't do anything. They're never around. And it's, you know, I don't know what they do for the 250. 300,000 bucks we pay them because they're never around. I'd never see them on North Walker Road, Gulf Road. And I basically, I leave my house and I go there, Elmore Pond Road. Elmore Pond's just as dangerous, but at least most of that is straight road where you've got a line of sight. Gulf Road, there's no line of sight. And so the numbers are basically the same from the bridge to Mel Stoddard's house. And then when you get into the curves, yeah, people slow down. Because if you don't, you're going to end up in the drink. And so, but even at, if someone's running at 35 miles an hour on those corners, down between Mel's and, and Route 15, honestly, that's where I've almost got hit umpteen times. There's a blind spot coming off the bridge. There's a blind spot coming right by Mel Stoddard's barn in between my place and Whitetail Drive. You get to Mel's, and from there all the way down, it's blind spots galore, and it's a uh, lane and a half wide. So I don't know what the answer is, but as a town, we changed the dynamic of the road a year ago. And I still question the, the legitimacy of that because it has been talked about in 2016 several times at this board. And so that being said, the dynamic of that road was changed a year ago, and it is now way more dangerous. And so, you know, it's, it's not just myself that there is, you know, I just talked there, hang, I talked to the Stoddards. They're of the same mindset. There's uh, it's a Blaisdell, the guy right up around the corner from me, him and his wife walked down through there, the guy up in the yellow house, they all walked through there. And it's something where with gravel biking now becoming more of a thing than mountain biking, it is a tour of gravel bikes every weekend. Someone's going to get killed. And, and obviously you don't want to see that, but it's something where, what can we do to make that road safe? I mean, you know, with the road study, you can, the town, if the town passes uh, uh, an ordinance, you can lower the speed limit to 25 miles an hour. And is that going to fix everything? No, but... Yeah. I think it'll it'll open people's eyes if there's decent signage, if there's yield signs on the bridge. I mean, it has some, you know, and, and I understand what you're saying about trying to get the signs and you've been helpful with it. But it's something where, you know, we put up no parking signs on, no, on Corley Road at the rail trail because people complained about people parking on that road, I'm guessing. And there was no road study done. Those those signs aren't legal either because there was no study. Uh, that was done by uh, VTrans and Vermont State Government. Those are not our signs. Yeah. You know, but we we put 
those signs up or we, whoever it is, put signs up on a road that gets very little traffic and people can't park on the side of the road where you can see for a mile. Yeah. Yet on this back road that is the dump, it's now a cutoff because we can't police or control the amount of track trailer traffic on North Wolcott, which you guys well know about. You talk about it, you know, with Crassberry and all that. At what point do you, you know, we have to do something. Yeah. I mean, one but thing. It's I... all the roads in, in Wolcott. It's not just your road. It's my road. Uh, my road is just as bad. I mean. Does that make a right? No, it doesn't. But it's. Um... I mean, think about Maury Hill Road. Try to think about the people that go speed up to Maury Hill Road and the other one. It's lowering the traffic to 25 miles an hour, I don't believe is going to stop them from mm -hmm. speeding. There's a quote in the handbook that says unreasonably low rate of speed limits generates more speeders and a general disrespect to speed limits as they are anyway. Well, I read I, I read all that, but if if you so, if there is a yield sign on the bridge. Well you can't put a yield sign wait, on the bridge. No it's a big really from Sorry. the public to, it has okay. to go through me. Sorry. That's <laughs> right. Or you can ask to be in order or something. So anyways I don't know what the answer is. Um I, it's something where you either there are options are you limit the traffic somehow some way on the road, which she needed open, and I don't think the went out again. I guess but we've opened up traffic on that road off of to make a solution off of another road that we're trying to limit. It just doesn't make sense. We, we, we opened up. So when the whole truck, and not to rehash that whole side of it, but when the whole truck posting of that was set up in 2012, it was done by the road foreman and the select board. Then in 2016, gravel, gravel incorporated as Lamoa Valley aggregates at the reed pit on a road that was exempt from trucks and you couldn't get an overweight permit and it was a six ton road. They opened up that pit. Kim Gravel was on the select board. There is a meeting, there is minutes in here. I, would say, I know. But, but it just let me finish because there are minutes in here that we have taken a road that was exempt to trucks that would eliminate a huge part of this safety issue. For me, it's not just about the speed. It's the safety of that road and the dynamic of that road. And in 2016, gravel slash Lamoa Valley aggregates opened up that pit on an illegal road. And Kim Gravel, a week later, it's right here in the minutes. And when we said we couldn't find anything in the minutes when everything was changed, it's right here in the minutes. Kim Gravel sent an email to the board that isn't listed in here, but basically questioning it. The board continued to keep the road posted with her on that board. Five months later, Belinda brought it up because the road was in shambles and it was discussed again on the board. It's right in the minutes. And the board continued to keep the road posted at six tons, no trucks, probably for safety and infrastructure, protecting the road and protecting the safety. Six years later, you guys have changed the dynamic of that road because there wasn't sufficient evidence or minutes or whatever. There's three, there's two to three sets of minutes from select board meetings re or continuing the posting of that road. So however it's done, and honestly, we should look at a lot of our roads because you're right. People drive like idiots around here and it's not just my road. However, my road to Elmore Pond Road is a cutoff. And it's a cutoff from an illegal tractor trailer road. But what we've done is open it up to allow all these trucks, which just exacerbates the dynamic of safety because there's not a better answer. That's not the right way. In my mind, first of all, any select board can undo what a previous select. That's fine, board. but it's that's one thing. The other thing is, but it was undone because yeah. it was undone because 
there wasn't sufficient evidence or that it was done correctly. And it was. It's in various minutes. It's also because the and because Fort Hill Bridge was taken out and there's not a safe way for trucks to get up and out of the North Hulkett Road. I've been standing on the side of the entrance to 15 and North Wilkett Road and trucks coming from the village trying to come up through are in the other lane as cars are coming down. <laughs> Once that bridge, the board decided to remove that bridge because that's how the trucks used to go. But those Over trucks aren't supposed to be on North Wilkett Road. Bottom line, they're not supposed to be on North Wilkett Road. Well, they can be with an overweight yeah. permit. Okay, so so now they have an so because you got to you you can't ever say you can't have anything. Well, we did on the the bridge, but you can't ever say that I'm aware of. Say you can't a truck can't go on a road. You absolutely can. No, you have to let delivery trucks go through and all that stuff too. You just can't stop oil. You can't stop seventy thousand pound dump trucks with beaver tail excavator trailers on the back of them going down a back road because it's a cutoff and it's a lane and a half wide. Okay, so we're not getting anywhere. We've had this conversation. There's not enough people here to make a decision tonight. And I apologize a, a lot because I'm embarrassed about that, it. it. But that's I what it is. To, to make it on the agenda for next meeting. Which is one because I believe twentieth every two. It's the first and third Wednesdays of the month. Okay, um, I should be able to be here, but uh, you can I, always attend Zoom if you want. Yeah, no, it, it, uh, I'm leaving. I'm going on a fundraising trip to no, uh -huh. so long story short, I'm not going to be at a place. So let me okay. figure out if I'm going to be here. Okay. And I'll let you know via email. Um, if not, we'll put you on the next agenda. And it, it was more to find out where we ended up based on the traffic study. What, and I know you can't vote on anything, but what are the recommendations from the board, whether it's this road or other roads, to help make this road in particular, but if there's other roads that need it too, to help with safety? We can't rely on the sheriff's department. They're never around. It's that simple. So are there other recommendations that the board has or current that you have as town manager, et cetera, that what administrator, whatever, you know, what are the recommendations? Well, you know, <laughs> my personal recommendation is uh, to go with cautionary signs that are um, <clears throat> uh, comply with the, the federal rules. Um, my another concern that I just pass along to the board is once we put in a 25 mile an hour zone anywhere in town, it won't be 24 hours before you're going to have to do it on the pond road. Um, I mean, every it, it'll just the town will become a 25 mile an hour town, um, and that's that's really discouraged by. The rules of the road, as I understand it. So, but you do one road, you're doing them all. The phone will ring within minutes. <laughs> but honestly, what does that hurt? What What does it hurt? It, it, it hurts. I, I mean, so I'll, I'll leave it at that. I think it's the thing of, it goes back to the suggestion of if you go two and one, if you go too forward in one direction, people just disobey every speed sign you put up. I think that's the thinking on it. People that are going to disobey it are going to disobey it regardless. I understand that. Problem now is the different type of, and, and I'll, it's the last time I'll say it, the different type of traffic that is on these back roads. On most of these back roads, you don't have a steady stream of, 50 to 75, 70 to 80,000 pound rigs running up and down these roads. This road you do. And that's the difference. So I don't know how you, how you fix that if you can't do it with the speed signs and or eliminating the trucks, but I'm all, I'm all for suggestions. So. 
Hi, this is Monica. Can I say something? Mm -hmm. Um, we have that speed limit, that speed sign on Town Hill Road, and we're we're mighty used to it by now, anyway. But I do remember that the sheriff's department said that they could put like a camera or something on it. I'm wondering if that speed sign could somehow be utilized in helping with this problem. Like move it over to the Gulf Road. We'd love to move it, but it's cemented in. No. It was never put, it, it's in a horrible place. I don't, huh. I don't know who thought to put it there. Darn it. Okay. And the other one that we had a motorist ran over and trashed and we found parts of it, I think in Craftsbury. How much did it cost? They were a grant from the sheriff's department. That's all. A I grand think. or a grant? Mm -hmm. There's actually a speed limit on the really good studies that say that having a uh, radar speed sign next co-located, because the state law, you have to co-locate them. They have to be together. There are a lot of really good studies that show how effective those are. There will occasionally be the kid that tries to get high score and think that's going to fix your problem. However, the general person who's doing the 43 miles an hour might see that 35 blinking at them and would probably slow down. It's human nature. And that's, and that's, I do it. It's, and whether, whether you speed or not, you see the light blink and you're like, it's, you know, you're like, you think, right? You're left. I, I just think that it's, and you look at, so they grade that road. The, the road department does a great job, right? And they grade that road constantly. And the two probably worst areas outside of climbing the hill off of 15 by Gravel's Pit are the washboard by Whitetail Drive and the washboard on my straightaway. And it's accelerating and decelerating off of that bridge and around that corner. And if somehow you can keep people from coming across the bridge at 35, which it's legal to do, they won't hit 50 by the straightaway. And so if you can either slow them down at the bridge, coming to the bridge, whatever it is, those signs do work. And I'd be willing to invest in it. I'd be willing to, no different than the road study. It's something where I feel strongly about it. I'd be willing to offset it for the town because I know the town didn't even want to spend for the road study. So I'd be willing to put in for a sign or one of those things if it's, you know, just so. Well, at this point, I would be open to you um, investigating the cost of this, a couple of them, what, what it would cost the town. If you could bring that to us to purchase a... And the town doesn't have to. We'll go from there. I'm not making any promises, but, you know. Okay. All right. Well, let's, I guess, uh, let's figure out if uh, the 20th works and then uh, we'll revisit it then. Okay. I'll let you guys get to your other business. So, thank you. Yep, thank you. I don't know what local C control commission is. There was an application for a renewal that the state had approved for the operation of well, cannabis in town. Yeah. Well, um, I don't have it. That sounds like maybe a next we'll to, meeting. Yeah. yeah, we'll have to wait. Can't believe there's one person here from the school street users that could up their monthly water rent. But we'll have to bypass that. Kurt, do you want to give your project manager's report? Yeah, I can. Um, so <clears throat> I think hopefully you have a copy there. Yeah. But most of the focus under uh, this past couple of weeks has been uh, around um, getting the data together for insurance, uh, flood recovery primarily. Um, I do want to just mention, uh, if um, you might all be aware that uh, our one-ton truck was stolen last night, um, and uh, 
It was a result of a police chase on the Pond Road uh, where the uh, suspect uh, dumped the truck he had stolen on McCurney Road, went down to the woods and uh, got into the town one-ton truck and stole it. And that was reported to the Sheriff's Department this morning. Um, the Subsequent to that, um, Dylan and Joey were going to pick up uh, their plow truck from repair and were in Cambridge. And lo and behold, they passed the Volcut truck, uh, the stolen truck. And the, the uh, stolen truck had its logo spray painted off of it. And following the stolen truck were two uh, patrol cars uh, there. Lights were not on, but they were following very, very closely. One was state police and one was the sheriff. And uh, at this point, we're waiting. I, I assume this person has been arrested. And I assume our truck is somewhere um, with the sheriff. And uh, just wanted to give everybody an update on that one. A uh, little shocking. <laughs> um, Second is garage mold clearing. We're scheduled for next Thursday to have um, Safe Serve to come in and to do the uh, stripping of the walls to put up water vapor uh, and to um, chemically spray for black mold, which is very pervasive in there. Um, and also, uh, we have started the order for a new overhead door that was damaged in the flood. Uh, and uh, that has started to be in motion. I don't know where the uh, application stands at this point. Um, I know Linda was signing it. I don't know if it's been Application sent. and exempt tax exemption certificate have been emailed. And we have the orders that we're signing with the 50% deposit, which will be mailed in a day or two. Okay. Okay. Um, had a very interesting visit today um, at the MSI facility on Route 15. Uh, more or less, this was just a long shot of what are all of our options, what are possible options um, for relocating the garage and re relocating the fire department out of the flood zone. Um, the facility that MSI has is uh, 12,000 square feet. Um, it is a modern building. It is very well equipped. Uh, infrastructure is, is good and solid. Um, it is a cement floor structure, uh, very high ceilings. Um, heating and so forth are all in place. Um, and it, I would encourage the board to consider taking a look at this. Um, it is up for lease or for sale. Um, but as far as a turnkey garage and fire department, I don't think I, I was really surprised that it, it, it fits to a T. Um, there would need to be a little bit of, uh, build out because the doors, uh, these are dock doors, they would have to be changed to overhead doors. But other than that, it is uh, it is perfect, really. It's just a one great big wide open space there. They do have a bit of a water problem. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there are, there's a solution with a spring that might be overhead, uh, but that was the negative that I saw. So, um, you know, depending on your thoughts, if this is worth taking a look at, um, I personally think that it is. Um, we've been working on changing subjects here. I've been working on a municipal insurance claims, uh, trying to correspond with our BLCT insurer. Um, as I've mentioned before, the assessor has uh, come at one time only um, I've been corresponding and Deb has been doing a lot of uh, research, but I've been corresponding with our VLCT rep. Um, as mentioned before, there's a $5 million cap on this for the entire state of Vermont. Um, and 
it's kind of difficult now to understand exactly how we uh, position a claim, but we're going to continue to do it just as you would normally. Um, they are asking a few questions. Um, we're able to respond to those questions, um, but it's really unclear really what, what the other side of this is going to look like. Um, I don't, at this point, I don't think we have to escalate it within VLCT, but we do have a deadline with FEMA. So whatever is not covered by VLCT is potentially can be covered by FEMA. But there's a, there is a time constraint and one event has to happen before the other can. And so um, any too much delay uh, from VLCT is, will be a problem. So we may have to put a little bit more pressure on them going forward. Um, FEMA documentation, we're meeting with FEMA again tomorrow. Um, we have put together all of our, uh, our damage inventory with, with, with GPS locations. We have all of the photographs for them. Um, what the latest request from FEMA was to assign a cost to each one of those damaged line items. Um, and I am in the process of trying to do that. Um, I can't say that we have all of our invoices in as of yet, uh, but we'll be discussing that with FEMA tomorrow. Uh, next is the port of lead. I just want to mention that um, I indicated at our last meeting that the portal app was going to be canceled. Um, but I decided just to hold off um, because of the um, barbecue event. I thought it would be good to have that there for the barbecue event, and then it'll, it'll go away. Um, 911 signs have been picked up, over 900 of them, I believe. And along with the mounting posts and the hardware um, has also been ordered and I believe it was hardware was picked up today. So we're in a Just position- Just to let you know, I have not ordered all of them yet. He wanted me to do them in batches, so they're not 900 yet. Just so you know that. Okay. Yep. I, yeah, I, th I guess the order said 900 then. Maybe, I don't know. I didn't count them. Okay. <laughs> Um, so at any rate, we're in a position right now where, um, the project can get started. Um, Deb has, uh, indicated that she would take the lead on, um, placement of the signs. In other words, making sure we got the right signs with the right houses, uh, in the right location. Um, and Bob will be installing the signs. Um, I think Deb is thinking about starting with a small road, um, and kind of seeing how it goes. You know, if we're going to, if we're going to learn as we go, which I'm, which is usually the, always the case, um, we want to do it on one of the easier roads to manage. Um, as far as road maintenance goes, um, We've kind of changed our operating procedure with the road crew. Um, they are, uh, after a heart-to-heart -heart meeting where we are um, reporting daily on what's being done and where it's being done. And uh, I intend to uh, forward all of that to the board um, on a daily basis. Um, Citizen complaint log, um, to date, we have uh, a cit uh, citizen complaints, which are like 99% roads, road issues, um, had been um, through my own uh, desire to, to keep it moving and not have delays for, for citizens. Um, those started to come to my home phone number, and uh, that grew into a situation where um, there simply was just referral to my home phone number. And so we, what I'd like to propose or have the board uh, speak to the town clerk 
um, and use a log instead. Uh, so the calls are logged. Um, this is using Google Docs, so it's a shareable document. Anybody can look at it at any time. Um, and it would be our, the road crew's responsibility to look at those and to respond to those um, rather than having them come to me directly. Um, we did get the an extension for um, our road segment projects. Um, our road segment this year is primarily Keeler Pond. Um, and VTrans did extend it for a year, a little over a year, I believe. Um, and that really took a lot of pressure off the road crew. Um, but Dylan is still convinced that he will have Keeler Pond done this year. Um, but it would be towards the end of October rather than the end of September. Um, so that was really good news um, coming with that extension. I will note that to get that extension, there's some paperwork that needs to be done um, that I'll be filing along with Dylan um, back with the state. And basically what you're doing is acknowledging that you are taking uh, the extension. Um, <clears throat> Brush hogging, um, I need to get a hold of uh, our uh, maintenance crew um, and kick off brush hogging at the transfer station. Um, and I wanted to ask, Linda, in your history, is this about the time of year when that's usually done? Right. Well, who's our maintenance crew? It's uh, Isaac, Isaac, who does all of our lawn mm -hmm. care. Um, also wanted to make a suggestion of transfer station management. Um, transfer station management has really been split between um, the board and, uh, and the town clerk. Um, but I wanted to make the recommendation that it be uh, under the treasurer's purview. Um, it is a business. It's one where the relationship with the attendant is uh, strong. And um, I think it would not having the transfer station be partially driven by the board, partially driven by the town clerk, partially driven by the administrator. Um, I would propose that uh, that become a focused management uh, issues, position. Um, and same with website posting. Um, website posting, these will be posts of agendas and minutes and so forth and so on, um, is another area where uh, multiple, uh, multiple users are coming in modifying uh, posting, deposting, um, and that's a formula that's just simply broken. Um, and so I'd like to propose that uh, we find a way, it could either be the administrator or it could be the clerk um, that is the single user of uh, website posting. And that's what I got so far. Yes, thank you. We had our uh, bids for our town hall heat and water, um, which we'll have to put off. But um, And we also have to accept our engineering bids. And I think he's starting on Friday. Um, and I'm going to propose that we have a... Um, a quick meeting at some point so that we can uh, get these resolved. Um, do you have a special time that is good for you, Alan? That you could have a special meeting, like even if we do it Zoom? Um,
I mean, do you get home at night sometime? What time yeah. do you get home? Five o'clock is safe, right? Okay. When I call um, Richard and find out um, how he's feeling and if he couldn't have a 15 minute uh -huh. meetings, because those two things we need to um, deal with. You should always worst case call by phone. Right. So Kurt has officially uh, submitted his uh, resignation from the select board. So we will post that on the board and on the website for 10 days. And at our next meeting on the 20th, we will um, hear from candidates who are interested. I have Michael Parody here tonight. Do you want to talk or wait? Okay. All right, so Michael is interested in filling that spot. I wanted to let everyone know uh, it's official and uh, it's public now that the uh, Wolka Community Forest was awarded $580,000 from the U.S. Forest Service um, to purchase our final lot. So we'll be moving forward for that probably uh, January. I think January is the soonest we could close on that. That's exciting. It was very competitive um, this year. And the last thing is just about the barbecue. It sounds like it's gonna rain. That's every year. But I was thinking um, it, of not canceling it, it's just too hard with the food. That if it is raining, that we would uh, put tables around the outside here. We can have some tables in here for people to eat. If it's not pouring, they still could eat under the gazebo. Um, the library is still open. It'll kind of put a little damper on things, but um, I would say we just move forward. That's all right. Okay. Do you have anything else? Just for a motion to adjourn. Make the motion to adjourn. Second. At 6.53. And I will shoot you an email about we really need to deal with Borns because they have to order that and there's no theater for town hall for ballet. And 